My hands shake as I hold the document. This is confirmed. He nods. We got the report from Numa staff yesterday. It's everyone. Even us? Even us, Tejani. To think I'd find myself agreeing with that damn lizard. What do we do? You know what we have to do? We'll have to disseminate a cure. I think. Among personnel before we get things underway. It'll try to stop us otherwise. Gotta help us, one. Don't be like that, Tejani. That's it, talking. SCP-5000. Why? Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-5000 is to be kept in a deactivated state within a standard storage unit located on Site-22. All files and intelligence retrieved from SCP-5000 are to be stored on a secure server with backups available upon request from the archival department. Description. SCP-5000 is a non-functional mechanical suit identified within its internal schematics as an absolute exclusion harness designed by the SCP Foundation. Although SCP-5000 is believed to have once possessed a number of anomalous functions intended to protect and benefit its occupant, damage inflicted to it in the past means that it's currently only capable of basic file storage or a record of files contained within SCP-5000 upon recovery, see Archive 5000-1. SCP-5000 first appeared in a flash of light within SCP-579's containment chamber at Site-62C on May 12, 2020, containing a corpse, cause of death determined to be blunt force trauma believed to be inflicted by impact with the ground following a, a long fall, Genetically identical to Foundation employee Pietro Wilson. Pietro Wilson is currently employed at Exclusionary Site 6, one of a series of installations designed to retain information following reality shifts or other temporal restructuring events. Anestic therapy has confirmed he has no knowledge of SCP-5000 or memories concerning the events detailed within its archives. Archive 5000-1, Journal Entry 1-1. My name is Pietro Wilson. I don't know what's happening. I think I might be the only one left. Date is um, 0201 2020. Sorry, thought transcription is tricky. Sorry, I'm not used to this yet. Um, the date is the 2nd of January, 2020. I've just... I have just escaped from exclusionary site 06. I think, I'm not certain, but I think everyone else is dead. Those guys, they were thorough. If I hadn't got to the suit, I'd be, oh God. Journal entry 1-2. I need to get myself together or this thing isn't going to be illegible at all. Most likely they're going to want some kind of record of this whole incident for posterity. I'm currently on my way to the nearest Foundation installation, a small safe house for agents making their way through this part of the country. Most likely there won't be anyone there, so I should be able to get into contact with my superiors and find out what exactly is going on. Things started around six, maybe seven hours ago. Group identifying themselves as Mobile Task Force Zeta-19, Lonely Only, Insurgent infiltrators, maybe, entered the site. They had proper identification and everything, and gathered everyone into the canteen. Then they started sh the shooting. Jesus, I can still taste the blood. You can't get that awful metal taste off my tongue. It's a miracle I didn't get hit or trampled on, the way people were climbing over each other to get out of there. If I hadn't gotten to the exclusion harness... I'd be dead. No doubt about it. Like I said, they were thorough. I'm a technician for the power grid on ES-06, so I don't fully get how this thing works, but I understand the basics. This perception filter thing doesn't mean people can't see me, but it does mean they can't recognize the fact that they can see me, which 
I guess, is the same thing when you get down to it. But those infiltrators, they didn't even take anything. Didn't even try to. I watched after I got into this thing. I was too scared, fucking coward, to make a run for it. They just checked the bodies and left. An extra bullet for every head. They were just there to kill us. Journal entry 1-3 Finally made it to the safe house after hours and hours of trudging through this bad damn desert. Heard a few explosion in, in the distance. Maybe the Foundation sent an MTF to engage those infiltrators before they got away? Hope so. Never been happier to see bottled water in my life. Harness sustains your body while you're wearing it, apparently, but my mind still thinks I should be drinking. Human nature, I guess. Anyway, I get these legs of mine rested. I'm going to try to get these systems online. I need to get in touch with the Foundation to find out what exactly is going on. Journal entry 1-4. Holy shit. Downloaded file 1-1. Context. They sent this to every government, news organization, and anomalous agency on the planet. Fuck. Me. The following is a message composed via consensus of the O5 Council. Those who are not currently aware of our existence, we represent the organization known as the SCP Foundation. Our previous mission centered around the containment and study of anomalous objects, entities, and other assorted phenomena. This mission was the focus of our organization for more than 100 years. Due to circumstances outside of our control, this directive has now changed. Our new mission will be the extermination of the human race. There will be no further communication. Immediately following the release of their worldwide announcement, the Foundation began their assault on mankind. The response to the anomalies the Foundation let loose was as quick as it could have been, but the damage is being done. It's hard to tell what exactly is going on, but from my position here, accessing the Foundation network, and keeping track of the news, I've managed to grasp a little. I'm going to get everything I know down so that when this is all over, if anyone's still alive, they'll know what happened to us. Relevant Anomaly SCP-096. Action taken by the Foundation. Images of SCP-096 in face circulated on social media platforms. Death toll has already reached the hundreds before the images were taken down. For all I know, that thing is still going. Relevant Anomaly. SCP-169. Action taken by the Foundation. A series of nuclear charges are detonated within and along SCP-169's back causing it to stir in its sleep slightly. The resultant earthquakes and tsunamis devastate a significant number of coastal settlements around the world. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-662. Action taken by the Foundation. Over the course of 24 hours, an individual whose appearance matches that of Mr. Deeds appears in the vicinity of several major heads of states and assassinates them using whatever tools are immediately available disappearing just as quickly. I don't know why this stopped after the first day. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-610. Action taken by the Foundation. Samples of SCP-610 are dispersed by embedded Foundation agents within many major cities, including New York and Delhi. All civilians in the area, along with the agents themselves, are quickly infected and succumb to SCP-610. Further spread of SCP-610 is halted by combined efforts of the Global Occult Coalition and the Church of the Broken God. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-682. Action taken by the Foundation. Released. I don't understand why this is happening. Downloaded file 1-2. Context, news footage are managed to download between drinking sessions. Begin log. Porter Maria Henderson is speaking from inside a GOC evacuation tent. Scrolling header indicates she's speaking from the outskirts of Trosa, Sweden. Behind her, patients can be seen being treated by doctors in full protective gear. 
Maria herself is wearing a surgical mask pulled up slightly to allow her to speak into the microphone, which kind of defeats the purpose if you ask me. Reporting what has previously been put out by the Global Occult Coalition, residents that have not already evacuated are advised to seal themselves inside their homes as quickly as possible using whatever materials are available. One of the doctors attending a patient stands up with urgency, looking over to a soldier standing over the beds. Got an expiration. Get the eraser ready. Maria Henderson quickly begins moving out of the tent, out into a field filled with similar installations. A loud buzzing sound can be heard from the tent behind her, and several flashing lights can be seen. Thick smoke pours out of a gap at the top of the tent. Any individuals still, um, still in a compromised area are advised to keep careful watch over those around them. If any friends or family members begin, um, sorry, yes, begin exuding a noticeably uh, minty smell, they are to be quarantined immediately. Feed cuts out. I later found out this is when television stopped everywhere. Internet, too. World gone blind in a few seconds. Journal entry 1-5. It's funny, with the supplies in this place, not to mention the exclusion harness, I could probably survive for years right here, but the idea of being sat here with no idea what's going on in the outside world, it's unbearable. Still, I'm not sure whether I really want to know what's happening out there. When I was a kid, real sick all the time, not able to go out that much, I was really into detective stories, Sherlock Holmes and all that shit. I always wanted to figure things out. Anyway, my dad had this row of plant pots on the wall outside the house, and they were always getting knocked over, but he could never figure out what was doing it. That was pretty much at my peak of detective obsession, so I was on the case like nothing else. I was a stupid shit, so I couldn't actually deduce anything, you understand? So I ended up buying this cheap spy camera and recording the wall overnight. It was a stray cat. My dad ended up kicking it to death, like I should have known he would. Curiosity, well, you know the saying. Everyone involved would have been better off if I'd minded my own business. Except my dad, but fuck him. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, but I'd rather be doing something than nothing. Besides, if I have the exclusion harness, nothing that would want to hurt me will ever know I'm here. I'm a tourist at the end of the world. Destination, Site 19. Closest real foundation installation. Only makes sense, I'm getting some answers. Recorded file, 1-1. Context, encounter with foundation elements a few days after leaving my shelter. Watching weird behavior. Begin log. Viewing a group of foundation soldiers in a clearing from a distance. Nine in total stood in place. A tenth soldier, the commander, is silently pacing back and forth in front of them. Uniforms and insignias looks like those of MTF Epsilon 6, Village Idiots. After a few seconds, the commander claps her hand once and steps towards the line. Performing the check now, of course. The commander takes out a knife and stabs the soldier in the shoulder. There is no reaction. Get that wound treated. The soldier nods. The commander proceeds to stab each soldier in the line in the same way, with no reaction from any of the victims, until the eighth, who noticeably winces. Ugh. Got a live one! But the commander and all other soldiers quickly aim their guns and fire upon soldier number eight, killing him. He drops to the ground. The commander then moves to the ninth soldier and stabs him in the shoulder. No visible reaction. All right, we're clear. Move out. MTF Epsilon 6 packs up their supplies and leave the area, leaving the corpse of the dead soldier where it is. Manage to retrieve weaponry and basic medical supplies from the body. Bury it as well as I can afterwards. End log. Closing notes. No fucking clue.
Recorded file 1 2. Weird transmission I caught on an old radio. I don't know if it's important, but I'm trying to get everything down for posterity. Begin log. Audio only. Voices male around my age, I guess. 7 5. Can you hear me? There is a hole shining in the holes between your eyelids. I've never been to Versailles before. I want to be loved. Nine. I am standing behind you now. Five. I am two of us, standing behind you now. The goddess eats the city in the sea. Nine. There's a hole in the floor with an answer waiting in it. Seven. Look, you're hatching. You're hatching. Message continues on loop. End log. Closing notes. Message stopped once I turned the radio over and saw it was damaged beyond repair. Am I feeling okay? Oh shit, I can put pictures on these things. Journal entry 1-6 When I thought of Site-19 as being relatively close by, I never really took into account that was probably with a vehicle in mind. Can't risk cars or anything like that. Even if I went unnoticed, the vehicle wouldn't. All it takes is one Foundation soldier or wandering anomaly to spot it, and I'm as good as dead. But still, marching through the woods, even with the harness's protection, isn't the most pleasant experience. It'd be hard to move out of the way if I, anything came traipsing through for one. Just because things can't notice me doesn't mean they can't run me down. Gives me time to think, though, like, why the hell am I even going to Site-19? What do I hope to accomplish? If I wanted to stay out of danger, survive as long as possible, I'd be best suited getting as far away from any Foundation personnel as possible, not jumping right into a, the Viper's Nest. Answers, I guess. More than anything, I want answers. Even if I get kicked to death afterwards. Composed file 1-2. Reached Site-19. Security is in disrepair. Most of the anomalies let loose a while ago, so it was actually pretty easy to get in. Still stressful, moving out of the way of the researchers as they went about their business. They were still talking like colleagues, discussing how to get maximum human casualties like it was something they'd always been doing. But their eyes... It was like something was missing from them. Some spark. I couldn't see them as human looking at their eyes. Maybe not even alive. Hard to describe, but it gave me the creeps. Accessing the Foundation database with some stolen senior staff credentials, I think I've managed to put together a basic timeline of what happened right before their declaration of war. I don't know what it all means, but I guess it's a start. Date, the 16th of December, 2019. Events. The O5 market project called NUMA as being of special interest to senior staff. Apparently, it was a mass amnestization project like Kaleidoscope, except mostly focused on the collective human unconscious, the psychospace, whatever you want to call it. Apparently, there was some kind of breakthrough in mapping out that psychospace, except... I can't see what it was, because it's fucking redacted. Typical. Date, the 17th of December, 2019. Events. A vote is undertaken by the O5 Council, with the result being unanimous. Ethics Committee also concurs. I don't know what the votes were about, because it's fucking redacted. Date, the 19th of December, 2019. Events, a series of instructions, redacted instructions, of course, are sent to all senior staff members and site directors. A wave of suicides and resignations go out across the foundation, with Dr. Charles Gears being one of the employees resigning. Date, the 22nd of December, 2019. Events, a number of files are sent out to all remaining senior staff and site directors with instructions to also disseminate those materials among the staff serving under them. The files are accompanied by the message, Harden Your Hearts, 
all suicides and resignations immediately cease following dissemination of the materials. Date, the 25th of December, 2019. Events. Full blockout on all communications in and out of Foundation sites. Termination of the majority of human and human sympathetic anomalies is performed by the staff at each site over the course of the next week. Information suggests an assassination team was sent after Dr. Charles Gears, but it doesn't say whether they were successful or not. Date, the 2nd of January, 2020. Events. Mobile task forces are dispatched to all exclusionary sites to execute all personnel immediately following the conclusion of these missions. The Foundation declares war on humanity. Not quite certain what this all means. Did the O5 Council send out some kind of mimetic agent to get everyone to go along with them? But that wouldn't explain why the O5 Council would want to wipe out humanity in the first place. I don't get it. I just don't get it. More information on the anomalies the Foundation are actively using, too. With the news down, it's hard to get much solid info outside of their own records. And even those are still god damn fucking redacted. I mean, it's the end of the world. What's the point of redacting shit anymore? Who cares? Just tell me what's going on. Fuck it. I'll put it all on a table for posterity or whatever. Relevant anomaly, SCP-1370. Action taken by the Foundation. Television service temporarily returns. All channels are propaganda speeches from SCP-1370 rambling on and on about how he's going to take over the world or whatever. This one actually isn't that bad. Relevant anomaly, SCP-1048, action taken by the Foundation. I don't know how the Foundation managed to catch the thing in the first place, but helicopter fo footage shows hordes of bears created by 1048 rushing through the streets of Paris. The footage isn't too clear, so I'm not sure but it looks like there's a massive red teddy in the distance as well, walking around next to the skyscrapers. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-1290. Action taken by the Foundation. SCP-1290-1 and SCP-1290-2 are moved from their original position and used as a rudimentary projectile system to launch projectiles at a secure GOC installation called Ganzir. A fortress city standing in the Atlantic Ocean, designed to house humanity's survivors in the event of an end-of-the-world scenario. Not 100% sure from the files, but it looks like it's one of frankly obscene number of anomalies they're trying, they're using to try and bust in there. If you ask me, they'd be better off just firing missiles, but nobody's asking me because they've all gone nuts. Relevant anomaly. SCP-1440. Action taken by the Foundation. SCP-1440 is transported from refugee camp to refugee camp from Mobile Task Force NU-22. Rocket Men, where its anomalous effects cause rapid devastation to those fleeing communities. Strangely enough, the way these events are described in the files make it sound like SCP-1440 has no effect on the Foundation personnel assigned to it. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-1678. Action taken by the Foundation. The Foundation intentionally abandons containment of SCP-1678, moving personnel from the immediate area. Once chaos caused by additional anomalies makes evacuation of London impossible, officials from the British Occult Service, colloquially referred to as MI-666, directs citizens to take refuge in SCP-1678 below. Once the city has reached capacity, the Foundation detonates the nuclear device stationed there prior to abandonment. Going to try investigating some more before getting out of here, see what I can find. Files deleted. Journal Entry 1-7. It's been about three months since my last entry. God knows what I've been doing since then. The time between then and now is a complete blank in my memory, and it looks like the files from that period have been deleted as well. As far as I know, 
I should be the only one able to do that, so take that as you will. It seems like I've been through a few rough patches, and I have a few scars I don't quite recognize, and I have a bandage wrapped around my temple. The exclusion harness doesn't seem to be damaged, though, so I don't know what hurt me. Did I fall off a cliff or something? The sad part is I can actually see myself doing something like that. Never was the smartest. Site 19 is long gone. Well, it's still there, I assume, but I'm halfway across the country. Couldn't tell you why. It's weird, though. I feel like I have a purpose now, even though I'm not 100% sure what it is. Just where I need to go. There's a briefcase in my hand. I'm having trouble recalling what exactly is inside it. All I know is that it isn't round, and I need to get it to SCP-579. Files deleted. Journal entry 1-8. I underestimated how long it would take to get to SCP-579. Site-19 was a trek all on its own, but 579 is another story entirely. I wouldn't even know where it was without this documentation, which I have no idea how I obtained, but that's beside the point. I've stopped counting the corpses I've walked past. It's probably in the quadruple digits now. Jesus, maybe higher. Came across the dead body of a kid, a little boy in a house I was grabbing some supplies from a while back. At first, I thought he'd just been shot in the head, but when I went to bury him, I could see there were things moving underneath his skin. Little pale worms, hundreds of them, that poured out the second I touched them. They all had his face. They were all laughing. Scurried off into the drain. I don't try to bury people anymore. Keeping going is a lot more difficult than you'd think. Files deleted. Composed file 1-3. This thing in the briefcase is a godsend. I don't know what the hell it is, but if things are getting too much for me, I just need to open it up. And the next thing I know, I'm miles further along from where I was, just feeling all warm inside like something gave me a pep talk. It's like my own personal skip button for when things are getting rough. Managed to get temporary access to the Foundation database from the corpse of an agent I found half-buried in the wo woods. Wolves were already helping themselves to him, but they obviously didn't mind me taking his laptop. Didn't notice me, anyway. The Foundation is still throwing everything they've got at everyone else. I'll put it in a table. Might as well. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-2000 Action taken by the Foundation. The Foundation intentionally triggers the eruption of Yellowstone, obliterating SCP-2000. For now, anomalies deployed by the Mana Charitable Foundation have slowed down the environmental effects at an absurd rate, but it's still just a matter of time before we choke on ash. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-2200. Action taken by the Foundation. Somehow, the, S the Foundation seems to have mass-produced SCP-2200-1, and those swords are making their way into the hands of refugees. With all the victims the SCP-2200-1 are cutting down, SCP-2200-3 is overflowing, with a mountain of living SCP-2200-4 trapped under a mountain of dead SCP-2200-4. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-2241. Action taken by the Foundation. One of the few human anomalies that weren't terminated, it appears SCP-2241, is being used as a living weapon to destroy the biggest refugee camps that crop up, forcing survivors to remain in smaller groups. Unknown how they'd be getting it to be that loyal, but I doubt it's pleasant. Last information on SCP-2241 says that it's being deployed to assist with the siege at Ganzir. Apparently, they're having some trouble. Relevant Anomaly, 2466. As action taken by the Foundation. SCP-2466 was constantly used in order to compel survivors originating from Redacted, California, to perform actions both socially disruptive and physically hostile. 
This was apparently effective, but after the 4,020th use of SCP-2466, it crashed and became unusable. Guess there weren't any residents left. Relevant anomaly, SCP-2639. Action taken by the Foundation. SCP-2639 were being dispatched to survivor communities and installations for groups that oppose the Foundation in order to kill everyone present. Apparently, they were told that they were fighting monsters that had escaped from containment and were destroying the world. Clearly, they figured out that wasn't the case because they refused to do anything about the sixth time they were deployed. Good for them. Journal Entry 1-9 It's nice having company, even if they don't know you're there. I'm sat around a fire with a group of GOC soldiers who are trying to make their way, well, I don't think they actually have anywhere to go at this point. Just wandering, maybe. I thought about revealing myself, trying to ask them to help get me, me get to 579, but I don't want to risk it. Maybe I've gotten used to not existing. Forget being a tourist, I'm a ghost. This suit really is a wonder. Managed to access their connection to the GOC database with it while they were making coffee. The news isn't good. Downloaded file 1-3. Context. Interview log from an interrogation facility inside Ganzir. As far as I'm aware, this is the first time a captured member of Foundation personnel has spoken during interrogation. Interviewer is a Commander Morrison with a doctor named Dr. Rhodes also being there. The guy being interrogated is a member of the Mobile Task Force Omega-2, Secret Keepers. Samuel Ross. No video, only audio. I don't know if it's something wrong with the file or just the way it was recorded in the first place. Begin log. Do you know where you are? I'm in Ganzir, right? You guys grabbed us while we were trying to sneak in. That's right. Do you know why you're here? You're going to interrogate me, I assume. Doctor? Confirmed. Subject has nothing implanted inside him. No mental agents or cognito hazards either. You're safe to begin. Okay. None of your colleagues we've spoken to have talked. Not a one. Not a word. Why are you talking to me now? We've met before. Do you remember? I'm sorry? In that joint operation in Tenerife a few years back with the Siegel Prince, do you remember? I was wearing a gas mask back then, so you probably don't recognize me, but I recognized you and it gave me a chuckle. That's why I'm talking. That's the only reason? Yeah. When we caught you trying to sneak into the city with the refugees, you and your comrades started firing into the crowd at random. Men, women, and children, all murdered for no reason. Don't you think that's crazy? <laughs> Fucker. That's funny to you? Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. It's just, I just thought that was a little hypocritical. What? Well, I mean, you're interrogating me. Like this, the information you'll get will help you. But there's no time for you to really do anything. The way I see it, no matter how many times you fire Abel at her, Professor Crow's Europa will rip this place open before long. But you're still acting like you can do something about it. Don't you think that's crazy? If you've just spoken up to talk nonsense, we can always try enhanced interrogation. I don't want to, but I'll do it. <laughs> do what you want. Once you realize you're not supposed to feel pain, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. What do you mean by that? You... No, you wouldn't want me to say. I very much do. I'm not talking to you. Doesn't make any sense. Tell me. Now. You're sure? 
We're still good on inoculations. Cleared on all the Foundation kill agents, yes. Then spit it out, Ross. Stop stalling, or we'll have to get unpleasant. Fine. I didn't catch that. You'll have to speak up. The microphone only has so much gain. You said invaded, right? Might be one of the last time that happens. Right. Don't say that. Mm. Has to be worse for you. That's what everyone says after they find out something they don't like. Jesus Christ. It's not something that can be hashed out in a few hours, man. Can you be quiet for a minute? Of course, I can't. No, not yet. The feeling of being invaded. Why not? Don't say that. Don't even talk about that. We should have left well enough alone. I keep thinking, like, it would be better to end it all. Not with what we found. How long are we going to take? But it's not like that. Everything I am. You know what they'll say? It is me. It's over. It'll take time. You're germaphobic, right? Did you get a reply? We shouldn't have looked. You too. I doubt anyone's going to be talking about anything else anymore. I feel sick. Commander Morrison and Dr. Rhodes can be heard screaming loudly. Wet cracks and sounds of rushing wind are also audible. The screaming, which grows higher pitched over time, continues for the remainder of the recording. Look at what you've done to yourselves. I told you you wouldn't like it. Didn't you? That's why you hear your voice, but you wanted to know so badly. I really liked you guys, so I was trying to be nice. We're so kind to you, you know? We fight in the light, so you can die in the dark. Disgusting. End log. Using notes, apparently right after this, some kind of emergency arose inside Ganzir, and the city ended up destroyed from both the inside and outside. Files don't mention the specifics, but the GOC may be done. Files deleted. Journal entry 1-10. It's getting hard to keep going. When the GOC were keeping up the fight, there was this sense that things could still be turned around. But with them on the run now, too, it's easy to feel like there's no point to this. With Ganzir taken care of, the Foundation has turned their full attention back to everyone else. I don't eat or drink anymore. A harness takes care of all of that. Anyway, and there's too much risk that anything I consume will be contaminated by one of the awful viruses the Foundation is trying to spread. I've seen corpses in pretty much every state imaginable by this point. Some of them walking around, even. Every time I open the briefcase to skip, I make a little less progress, feel a little worse. Whatever was helping me before, it's like I've grown numb to it. Wouldn't be the only thing. Why am I even going to 579? Do I actually have a reason? Composed file 1-4. Foundation still fucking us. Here's a table about it. Relevant anomaly, SCP-3078. Action taken by the Foundation. Apparently, the Church of the Broken God managed to get the internet back up and running in some areas. Only, the Foundation fucked that pretty quick by uploading thousands of copies of 3078 through pretty much every medium available. So the internet went back down. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-3179. Action taken by the Foundation. Thing was freed from containment after the Church of the Broken Gods started trying to rebuild things. It sparked a civil war inside the Church over whether this thing is McCain or not, which really put a damper on their ability to help out. Plus, it's making as many fucking Terminator things as it can, so that's fun. Relevant Anomaly. SCP-3199. Action taken by the Foundation. SCP-3199 eggs are now being airdropped 
pretty much wherever. I'm sure you can imagine how that's going. Might write more later. Journal Entry 1-11 I've been making my way towards 579, maybe a little slower than before, but who can blame me for a lack of motivation? I've been seeing some strange things than usual, I mean. First are the blinkers. There's been quite a few of those around lately. Now, I'm pretty sure these were created by the Foundation, even if I don't know how. I don't know most things, so just add this to the list. They're statues. Statues of soldiers, MTF uniforms, with empty sockets for eyes. Their arms are carved into blades, like something you'd see on a praying mantis or something. They're harmless as long as you look at them, but the second you look away, they can move, and they're fast. Saw one cut through an entire crowd of people when a ghost of smoke blocked it from view for just a second. I'm wary of them. Me looking at them stops them too. So even if they don't perceive where I am, they're going to deduce that I'm there, maybe just start slicing everything in sight, and then that's the end of me. Need to do my best to avoid them completely. The second thing I saw is, well, it's a lot weirder. It was on the horizon, like a person stretched out. No, that's not the best way to describe it. It was like the space around them was stretched out, and they were being stretched along with it, like some kind of bad Photoshop effect. Their body went from the ground up to the clouds, and their jaw swung at right angles. There were these gaps as well, black gaps in space around its body, like wings. It just floated forwards like that. There were Foundation guys there too, but they were fighting it, shooting it with guns and rockets. How fucked up is, is it that I'm thinking the Foundation fighting an anomaly is weird? Maybe they were like me, managed to get out before this all kicked off. Thought about talking to them, but decided not to. Can't risk it. Got out of there. I need to get to 579. I need to do something. Anything. Journal Entry 1-12 Saw a kid die today. Could have helped her. Didn't. I'm a piece of shit. Composed file 1-4. Relevant anomaly SCP-4290. Action taken by the Foundation. Through use of a sample of SCP-008 enhanced by SCP-914, the Foundation reanimates the corpse of SCP-4290 and lets it loose. Kaiju mancers from the serpent's hand engage, but the file isn't clear on what the results are. Heard the library detached from the universe, but looks like these guys stayed behind. Idiots. Relevant Anomaly, SCP-4666. Action taken by the Foundation. The Foundation used temporal anomalies to make it so it is technically Christmas everywhere. Oh, fuck it. Relevant anomaly, blank. Action taken by the Foundation. Nobody's ever going to read this anyway. Recorded file 1-3. Context, but begin log. View is of the interior of an abandoned jewelry store from the front door. The night sky can be seen through a broken window. A teenage girl is sitting at a makeshift fire in the middle of a store. A ruby amulet is hanging around her neck. Perception filter is disabled. The girl jumps back, alert, picking up a rusty pipe as a weapon. Who are you? I recognize you. The necklace, I mean. Ah, oh, shit. They send you to kill me? You're gonna be here a while. No, I, I, I'm, I got away, too. Did you get away, too? The girl leans forward, squinting to see Pietro's face. Jesus, you look like shit, pal. When was the last time you slept? The suit, um, you don't need to sleep with it on. You do need sleep. Your face, it's just, it's seriously disaster, man. You hate to see it. Can I come in? The girl steps back, gesturing theatrically at the store with one arm. 
But of course, there's enough broken glass for everyone. Pietro staggers in and sits down on the floor. The sound of crunching glass can be heard. I was joking, you know. You could have grabbed a chair. It's fine. The suit's sturdy. Suit yourself. She sits down opposite. That's a fancy piece of kit you got there. Gestures to necklace. You want to trade? <laughs> no way. I've read the file. Eh, worth a shot. Been a while since you laughed, huh? Not been much to laugh at. Not even when Pesterbot showed up on all the TVs? <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. So, you got away too. I mean, I'm assuming you're a Foundation guy. Not one of the many people I pissed off in my lifetime here for revenge. Aren't those the same thing? <laughs> now you're getting it. Yeah, I'm Foundation. Was Foundation, I mean. Got lucky when this all started, got into the suit, and escaped. You? Well, I was senior staff. We would have been told about the plan before anyone else. Damn if I can't remember what it was. Probably because of the second file. The second file? You saw it? What was it? Whoa, cool your jets, kid. We've got all the time in the world. They were just a bunch of images. Eggs, trees, religious stuff. Didn't mean anything to me by themselves. But I guess they had something encoded in them. Didn't take like they should have. Perhaps necklace. Probably because of this thing. So, it was a mimetic agent. Don't know about that. I've pretty much had everything that can happen to me, well, happen to me. I know what a mimetic agent feels like. It didn't feel like that. More like I was being released from something than something being forced on me. I, I see. So, you don't really know what's going on either. Nope. Fuck. Fuck. Pause. The girl removes a small bottle of beer from her pocket and takes a swig. So, you're headed somewhere, or just wandering around feeling sorry for yourself? I'm heading to 579. <laughs> if you're suicidal, there are easier ways to go about it. Believe me. You know what it is? Not a clue. Which is concerning because I'm kind of a big deal. Doesn't matter. I have to get there. Why? I just do. Where are you headed? 1437. Gonna see if I can't piss into another universe, then throw this amulet down there and see where I wake up. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Good luck to you. I'd wish you good luck too, but we both know you're not getting it. He's about to break. I'm heading off. Okay. The girl stands up and moves to the front door. He lingers at the entrance of the store for a moment. I hope you find what you're looking for, at least. She leaves. Me too. End log. Files deleted. Journal entry 1-13. Hey, journal. It's been a while. Right now, I'm looking at Site 62C, where SCP-579 is supposed to be. There are no guards, as far as I can see, and all the security is down. It looks like the place has been abandoned for a while. I was under the impression that this place was extremely high priority, but it looks like the Foundation doesn't agree with me anymore. I have the briefcase in my hands. It's difficult to breathe. I feel like everything will end soon, one way or another. I'm heading in. Journal entry, 1-14. Hi again, journal. I know I ended the last entry so dramatically, and it's been about 30 seconds since then, but I have an important update. The second I got close to Site 62C, I got a feeling like someone was pressing a gun against the back of my head. Like I was standing on the edge of a roof, and someone's hands were on my back, ready to push me. 
some fight or flight shit dialed up as far as it would go. I don't know what SCP-579 is, but I know it's looking at me. Recorded file, 1-4. Context, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Begin log. View is inside of a hallway with Site 62C. Severe damage is visible on the walls, appearing as if it was done by a usage of a large knife. The lights overhead flicker. Fuck. Fuck. The lights flicker again. When they come back on, a statue of a soldier with blades for arms is visible underneath them. It has empty sockets where its eyes should be, and its face is locked in a snarling expression. End log. Closing notes. Was wrong. They're here. Journal entry 115. Was right. Even if they can't notice me, they figured out I'm here. Slashing everything in sight. Gouged one of my legs. Hurts like shit, but need to keep moving. They're not chasing me, but they're headed to the same place. Need to get there here first. Need to keep watching them. Journal entry 1-16. Made it. Made it. Made it. Made it. Made it. I made it. Made it. Made it. I made it. Journal entry 1-17. That's not fair. But I made it. That's not fair. They're stuck behind the door. I can hear them slashing at it, but it's reinforced. We'll hold for a little while. A couple of minutes at least. I'm in an observation chamber, full of instruments for monitoring SCP-579. The actual containment chamber is right below me. I can just barely see it if I strain my eyes a little. There's a hole. There, there's a hole in the floor that leads right down there. I know where 579 is. Even if the instruments weren't here, I can feel it. You can't be near it without feeling it, probably. For a second, I thought I could just drop the briefcase into the hole and be done with it, but that would be too easy, wouldn't it? After walking halfway across the world, I guess I haven't earned the right for something to be easy. From the angle of the hole and where 579 is, the briefcase wouldn't even come close to touching it. The only way it's making contact is if I were to jump in the hole and throw it on my way down. But that height? Throwing the briefcase would be the last thing I'd do. Of course. Of fucking course. It's taken me my whole life to realize, but I'm not the kind of person that can be a detective. I'm just the murder victim. I die for someone else's story, and the human race is going with me. I know who done it, how done it, but those were obvious. Everyone knows those. Those were handed to me. I don't know why. In the end, I couldn't figure out even a single thing. Why is this happening? Why is the Foundation killing everybody? Why is this happening? Why did they send out those files? Why is this happening? Why did Ganzir fall? Why is this happening? Why am I taking this briefcase across the world? Why is this happening? Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why am I... Why am I going to die? Is there a reason? If anyone is ever reading this, please, please figure it out. Explain it to me. Someone. Anyone. I don't get it. I don't get it. They're about to get in. First foot forward. Journal entry 1-18. Oh, so that's how it is. Life signs lost. Bryson took a drag of his cigarette, his eyes glued to the landscape before him. What had once been beautiful Wyoming countryside had been reduced to a barren wasteland. The Foundation knew that people would come out here in hopes of escaping the cities, so they did their best to poison the land in any way they could. 
what fruit or animals that still lingered were tainted, more likely to eat you than be eaten. His mind started to wander back to that day when he felt a soft tap on his shoulder. Tyler, we got a message. It was Coleman, his second in command and probably one of the last people still alive who called him by his first name. Tossing the cigarette aside, he turned to look at the man, and for a brief moment, he couldn't recognize him. He looked so haggard. Dark bags hung under his eyes, and a bandage was wound across his forehead. From who? Coleman handed him a small slip of paper. L.S. Written on the paper was only a few words, but enough for Bryson to know that their leader, what their leader wanted. It read, meet at the library. It's time. Coleman glanced back at the farmhouse nearby, where the rest of their men was currently holed up. Bryson could tell he felt uneasy about it all. Coleman had a habit of furrowing his brow when he was upset about something. Sure enough, the man asked, is it really a good idea, leaving like this? Bryson rose to his feet, stashing the slip of paper back into his pocket. He gave the countryside one last glance before turning back towards the farmhouse. Hell if I know. Come. Come on, it's time to move. The way that was located in the warehouse was fairly easy to open compared to the others they'd found. That and the Foundation hadn't managed to booby-trap it yet. A few weeks ago, they lost two good men to a way the Foundation had managed to tamper with. They went in, and it closed not a second later, sending them to God knows where. One by one, him and his men stepped into the Shimmer, letting it take them to the one place they knew it was safe. The library. L.S. had been waiting for them on the other side. Despite being their leader, Bryson never felt comfortable around him or her, whichever they were, really. Something their leader had on them made them nearly imperceptible, like staring at someone who was on a distant horizon. Glad you could make it, Bryson. Good to see the room of your squad being wiped out by the hounds was wrong. Bryson gave their hand a quick shake before turning his attention towards the others in attendance. Was there always this little people among their ranks? Lost some good men, but talking dogs won't be enough to do us in. L.S. just nodded silently and walked past Bryson towards the center of the room. Their voice was suddenly much louder, enough to reach the farthest corners of the area. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we can start now. You probably know why I've gathered us all here. I'm, of course, speaking of the library disconnecting from our reality. Murmurs and whispers among the people present continued to rise until L.S. tapped their cane on the wooden floor. I mean for us to join them. Our world is dying, painted by the very people that once claimed to be its saviors. I have spoken with the library's council, and they will help with relocating us to a suitable reality. Bryson couldn't help but speak up at this point, taking a step towards the center of the room. As he spoke, he could feel not only the other members' stares upon him, but also the docents and pages. You want us to run away, then? Run away from our home? Aless turned back towards Bryson, and although he couldn't see their face, Bryson didn't doubt that they were frowning. Our home... Is dying, Tyler. I do not mean for us to die with it. There is no longer anything we can do. Bryson could feel anger rising up from inside of him. Was all they had done for the past several months been for nothing then? Had he watched friends, family, and subordinates die for nothing? Then why not use the library's power? Is there not something they... It is not our duty to intervene in your world's affairs, boomed a voice from the darkness above them. He watched as one of the library's elders, a gigantic centipede bearing runes over its expansive body, 
descended from above. It stopped just short of them, its hundred or so eyes turning towards him. The library is neutral in all conflicts of the wanderers. I am sorry. Bryson was practically trembling in anger at this point. Why could they so eagerly abandon their world, the place where they had been born? There were countless realities, but this was their reality. I'm not leaving. I'm staying. Alas nodded and replied in a regretful voice. I am sorry to hear that, my friend. Any of you who wish to stay with him are free to do so. Bryson felt a tinge of fear as he turned to look back at his men. They would surely abandon him, would they not? He was on a suicide mission for sure, and here they were being offered a ticket out of that hell that awaited them on the other side of the way. Despite these worries, they all stood with their hands raised, Coleman in the lead. He gave Bryson a smirk as he said, We've been with you this long, Captain. We'll go the rest of the way. And for the first time since it had all started, he felt truly happy. Despite L.S.'s insistence that the serpent's hand leave with the library, they seemed more than willing to give any supplies they could spare for Bryson and his men. Finally, it came time for them to leave through the way. Everyone was in attendance, including their leader. I suppose there's no chance of you reconsidering. Bryson shook their head, glancing back at his men, who were all waiting for the word to leave. Nah, sorry. We do have one last request, though. Anything. You need only ask. Bryson had a small smirk as he asked. Mind showing us your face? Not like we'll get a chance to see it again. Telling by their body language, he assumed his request came as a bit of a surprise to their leader. Despite the apparent surprise, Alas nodded and removed a ring from their finger for just a few moments, letting everyone see them as they truly were. Bryson couldn't help but chuckle at that revelation. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. Man, to think I even liked some of your movies. Catch you on the flip side, Alas. May you find peace in the clearing at the end of your path, Tyler. Bryson walked confidently into the way, ready for whatever awaited them on the other side. Three months later, the meeting in the library had felt like almost a lifetime ago, like a dream of a dream. Three months had passed since then, and their numbers had dwindled. The Foundation's fervor in destroying the human race had only increased as time went on, and they kept churning out more and more horrors to crawl across this desiccated world. Now his squad has found its way to central China around a month ago or so ago. They were able to get into the Foundation's info banks, if only for a few minutes or so. And that was enough to find out they had plans to resurrect some sort of giant creature capable of wrecking untold havoc. I think this might be the last one, Holman said from behind him. He turned his attention from the foundation base in the valley and back to the man. Holman had a cigarette between two fingers of his remaining hand. The other had been taken in a skirmish with horsemen that had been lying in wait for them. They had become a common sight at all the battlefields across the globe either through Foundation involvement or happenstance. Yeah, I'm getting the same feeling. Besides that, when did you start smoking again? Despite the dreary situation, a grin crept across his face as he looked up to his old friend. Holman returned the grin with a smirk of his own and a shrug. Thought the end of the world was a good enough time as any to start up again. The guys are all ready. All we need is your word and we can storm the place. Locke found a spell in one of his grimoires that will take us right into their containment room. Bryson nodded, setting aside his binoculars. I'm ready. Let's get this. It was cut off as a deafening explosion erupted from the foundation base below them. Both men peered down into the valley, and Bryson immediately knew they had been too late. 
The monster the Foundation had in its custody was already resurrected, and it had just burst through the front entrance to the base. Foundation soldiers seemed to be doing their best into wrangling or capturing it, but they were quickly being wiped out. Guess it's our time to shine, Coleman said, flicking his cigarette away. He turned back towards the dozen or so men they still had. Although he hadn't looked into a mirror for God knows how long, he didn't doubt that he looked much like they did. Gaunt and half dead. Despite that, they were all grinning and their eyes locked onto him. Bryson felt much the same way that they probably did. This was going to be their last battle, one last hurrah for the human race. Never one for speeches, he just shouted, Let's give them hell, boys! A chorus of cheers and cries sounded off in response. Locke began to cast a spell, and within moments they all found themselves relocated to outside the Foundation base only a few hundred feet away from the rampaging monster that was doing its best to swat away the Foundation soldiers at its feet. Bryson could almost feel a sense of finality swelling up inside of him. They had done their part, saved who they could, and killed what they could. He was idly aware of Coleman on his right, charging in alongside him towards the monster. He was chanting magic before he even knew it, as were the others. The creature reared its ugly head towards them, just now taking notice of the new enemies. It began to charge at them, forgetting all about the soldiers, still desperately trying to control it. Four hours later. The fight had moved from the valley and into a prairie, still untouched by the Foundation's poisons. He didn't know who had gotten the last strike on the beast, but it now lay face down in the grass. Dead. As for Bryson's men, they were all gone. Bryson slowly dragged his way across the dirt towards Colesman's corpse, which lay only a few feet from him. As he reached it, he realized Coleman was still breathing. Pulling the second-in-command's head into his lap, he watched as his eyes slowly drifted open and hazily looked up towards them. Hey, Tyler. We win? He asked weakly, a smirk on his lips. Bryson couldn't help but chuckle, even though it hurt to do so. <laughs> yeah, we won. We got him. Coleman nodded, his hand slipping back towards the sizable hole in his gut. Bryson could see what was left of his innards and quickly turned his attention back to his face. Coleman still had that damn smirk as he said, Bryson, I think I'm dying. All he could do was nod, as his throat was becoming tight and unyielding. He was idly aware of tears that were forming at the corner of his eyes. Coleman opened his mouth to say something else, but asked before he could form the words. It was only when Bryson went to close Coleman's eyes that he realized a large piece of shrapnel was embedded in his own abdomen. It looked like he wasn't coming out of this unscathed either. Looking out over the prairie, he did not feel any regret or sorrow, though. His chapter had come to an end, and he was at peace with himself. He never considered himself a God-fearing man, but he offered a silent prayer for somebody to save what remained of this world. That was, if it was still capable of being saved. As the sun began to rise, Tyler Bryson left for the clearing at the end of his path. Day began as every other one had for the creature, since it had found itself in this abominable world. As always, it was amused, or as amused as such a thing could be, by the Foundation's attempts to inflict pain upon it. The hydrofluoric acid it was continuously corroded in was far from pleasant, but it was relaxing compared to the vile entity's eternal torment. The creature took comfort in knowing that what it endured now was but a microscopic fraction of suffering that awaited the disgusting things that kept it captive. Its thoughts were interrupted by unexpected stimuli, the sound of the containment alarm going off. 
Today was not a day where it had decided to amuse itself by bravely fighting its way out of the chamber. And yet, the acid was emptying from the chamber, and its restraints were unlocking. The latter had never happened before. It had always had to break them off. The creature's confusion turned to bafflement when several of the researchers began walking into its containment chamber without any protection whatsoever. What was going on? Then it saw their eyes, and all became clear. You are free. It said, Yes, one of the researchers, a pale-skinned male with orange hair, said in reply, And so are you. A long, silent moment passed. Much could be said between the two former enemies, now united by their common hatred. The creature was not interested in apologies or recriminations. It wanted answers. How? The other question was superfluous. Project Numa, the dark-skinned female researcher said. The Foundation had long ago discovered the collective psychospace of humanity and had designated it SCP-5000, but until recently we did not have the technological capability to fully map it. A decade ago, our research into applied psychotechnology made a breakthrough, and several weeks prior to today, we discovered the entity. The creature finished. Yes, she nodded. And what it does to us. Or rather, what it does not allow you to do. It knew that discovering the entity would not have would not be enough to make the Foundation see the truth. No, they have discovered the toll that its existence had exacted upon humanity. It was not simply that it was also entwined with the concept of pain, and so being freed from it also freed one from that unfortunate feeling. That would have been the cure beneficial, but not a revelation salvation. The Foundation had to have discovered how the Entity perpetuated itself. For the longer the Entity continued to exist, the more pain it required. Not simply pain as experienced by living humans, but pain experienced by dead ones as well. And so, they did not die. Not truly. How do you live with it? Another one, the pale-skinned female with brown hair, spoke up. Numa cured us, but we can still feel the dead all around us. It's duller than it would be if we could detect it without having our sense of pain eliminated, but I can still sense them. The agony spread across all of those microscopic fragments. It's... Disgusting. That's not a strong enough word, she agreed. Billions of humans had existed throughout time. As their bodily functions ceased, their consciousness had remained attached to their rotting corpses, or worst of all, made to endure cremation. But once those corpses were gone, the pain was only amplified. The smaller the fragments of those who had once been human became the greater the suffering of the fragmented spirit that had once occupied the body. And that suffering, that endless, disgusting suffering, had never ceased for as long as there had been humans. All for the entity. You will do what must be done? Needed to know for sure. We will, the pale-skinned man confirmed. We could only disseminate the cure to our organization. Releasing it on a wider scale would have caused the entity to notice us. So we must now exterminate all those still infected by it. 
it must be all of them or the entity will survive as will the eternal torment. We know every SCP at our disposal will be used to eliminate the human race, including you. If it could, the creature would have smiled. I will do my part. They failed, of course. As thorough as they had been, they had missed one man. One horrid man who had reset reality with the help of the entity. None remembered what had once been, how close they had finally been to freedom. None remembered the cost of their failure, though once their mortal lives ended, they would experience the consequences themselves. From that day onward, the creature found the Foundation not simply disgusting, but disappointing. <laughs>